Oh, his first clip, Payton uh, versus Arizona State. We're going to go over his, some of his isolation plays from the year, just kind of break down um, from an individual standpoint some of the stuff I look at when I watch guys and, you know, I try to emulate their games and add stuff to my game from their game. So first things first, um, let me take it back just a tiny bit. Um, sorry, when he catches it. So he's up top. He catches it. So first of all, it's just little stuff like on the catch. See how he comes up and he's kind of hopping. He's just reading the defense. You don't just come off and just go one way or go the other and just make up your mind. I mean, basketball is a read and react game. It's a thinking man's game, as Coach Almas says. So he comes up, you know, he's reading the defense. He sees maybe he can get a quick wash off his man, get around the corner. But Remy's a fast defender, so he takes him down. So Remy's automatically shifted. So, I mean, as a, as a guy with the ball, you know, he just takes him off. You know, he's trying to take him one way, trying to get him the defense to move his feet, see what, see what the defense is going to do. So he takes him to that side. He sizes him up. Uh, Peyton had just, I, th I think he had hit like two or three threes before this. Uh, but he does this little cross. And this move kind of reminds me of a little d little esque um, So he comes up, hop. Look at that hop. Read him. Coming out the hop, too, is a good, uh, I mean, it's a good opportunity to get a change of speed going, get downhill. He comes up, he hops. Remy's kind of backed off. Takes a little pound, do a little side step, left, right, and going outside foot, inside foot. If you were to go inside foot, outside foot, that just would be slower, and I just don't think it's that's efficient. This is a little D-Lil. He lets it go. Bucket. Uh, this one, I mean, there's not too much to be said about this one. This one is just kind of a simple, just read. Um, he gets a switch going, so when you get a switch as a guard, I mean, there's two mismatches. Usually, usually there's two mismatches, the big inside posting up with the guard or the guard taking the big man out top. Uh, so Peyton, you know, he backs him out. Peyton's our primary scorer, so he's going to get it. And he backs him out, just creates space. I mean, when you're a guard and you're going against a big, if you can get going downhill, I guarantee your feet are faster than his. So you want to be able to create space, try to get downhill. You know, take him, hit him with a bunch of moves, but back him out. That's first things first. So Payne backs him out. He's sizing him up. Boom, little hop. Just to read him, that hop is just to read. I mean, that little heads up. And he just lets it go. Fuck it. It's late shot clock, eight seconds on the shot clock. Payne has the ball, you know he's gonna go to work. So. Once again, see that Hezo? Look at the Hezo. That's the Darren Williams. This Darren Williams crossovers. I mean, the two things I notice. One, look how much space he covers. See how see all that on that little on that one hop. He gets all the way from that the edge of the logo to damn near at the three point line. Okay? That's first thing. Second thing, see where the ball is placed? See how it's wide? Like he's about to and look at his other arm. The ball's wide outside his body, like he's gonna go that way. And his arm is kind of like in a runner stance, like he's gonna dip his shoulder and get that shoulder, get that left shoulder to uh, the defender's left knee and try to get around the corner. So that, that's how he sells his crossover. He gets there. McKinley plays decent defense. This is a little stop, same foot, same hand stop. So it, it, this is just a faster stop than if he were to bring his foot, his right foot all the way across. And kind of bounce back so he stops with that hand same foot same hand backs him out behind the back just to change just to get the ball in the other hand because mckinley's all the way on his left side he kind of has these again puts that back foot back that left foot back to get a little bit of speed blows by him that same foot same hand finish on the layup uh that's just to i mean as a shot blocker tyler bay right there number one trying to block the shot and uh number 25 potentially blocking the shot that same foot, same hand finish just kind of just messes up their timing. They're not not—they're expecting you to go off in the typical one, two, lay it up. But you go same foot, same hand. It's so much quicker. You can get to the rim faster. He floats it. Good touch. Fuck it. And shot clock, you know who's getting the ball. It's PP3 time. <laughs> so uh, this one, so seven seconds on the clock, you just got to go to work. Whatever you got to do to get a shot off. You want a good shot, but I mean, just go. So, Payne sizing him up, 
hits him with a little D, D wheel cross, but I mean, the one thing I would say about this one, I mean, it's hard because the man up top is kind of in the gap, ready to help. But if you can get the ball wider out, so extend your arm out further, like it's going to be straight out, uh, like Allen Iverson on his cross, you see how wide, how wide his arms get with the ball. Um, and two, is kind of cover a little bit more space with his feet. I mean, it's hard because the defender's right there and there's not a lot of time. But he hits him with a little D will. As soon as you get by, that right foot step back. Um, when you're when you're trying to get shots up quick, you can't do you can't do the normal step back. You can't take another dribble and step back. He he immediately after the cross, he doesn't even take a dribble. He just steps back. That covers the most space. That creates the most separation. Let's it go. Fuck it. Most of these are gonna be late shot clock because I mean there's not a lot of isolation in college basketball, but when there is, I mean it's usually gonna be late shot clock. Uh, so here's another play. First things first. Pay's getting downhill. See how far? I mean he's all the way at half court. You can just cover. I mean you can get going downhill. You can get more speed going, and it's harder for the defender to move their feet. So if you can get all the way out there and take your man in, then do it. Um, but first things first, a little hezzy, just kind of reading. I mean, as a guard, I think one of the most important skills to have is a change of speed. Because, I mean, if you change speeds, you keep the defense on their heels. You keep them guessing. They don't always know what's coming, you know. So, first things first, that little hezzy sets up the change of speed. He uses that off arm to get by. That off arm kind of protects the dribble, and you can use it to swipe away hand checks. See how his left arm is kind of hard to see, but he's swiping away. His Payton's right arm is swiping away uh, the defender's left arm. And he gets by him. The one two, bring the ball up. That's something you gotta work on, uh, guards, when you're when you're just working on layups. Just move, work on moving the ball in the air, because there's always gonna be help. The court there's big there's NBA uh, sized guys in college, but it's not as wide as the NBA court. There's not as much spacing. So work on manipulating the ball, moving it on your drives, because you're never just gonna be able to keep it at your hip or keep it at uh, at, at one location, you're going to have to move it. So he brings it up high, takes that long step. Look at this long step that he does. That second step, one, two. That long step is to kind of set up the, the change of speed. So his defender is still going forward, but Peyton stopping on a dime and going straight up. And, and, and number two, the thing that I notice about Peyton on this step specifically is look at his left foot see how it, it kind of drags right there if you can drag your foot you know that's just friction you know it can help slow you up and help change your speed and uh that allows him to change his speed see how his defenders all the way up there but he's going straight up with the shot hits it overtime crunch time is where where you make your name so Peyton has the ball there's nine seconds left on the shot clock first things first he's getting them on his heels you know, you get a defender on their heels, they're not going to be pressed up as much. And if you hit them with a little, little in and out, crop, in and out, in and out, whatever you're going to hit. And they're on their heels, they're bouncing back. Then, I mean, as a defender, I'm going to be like, oh, shoot. Like, this, <laughs> this guy's got some. He's got some. So I'm not going to press up as much. So Payne does that. He gets an, enough space to read him. Has he? Look, see that? A little hesitation just to read. He attacks his top foot. Xavier Simpson is a good defender. And, you know, he's not. he can move his feet well. He's, he's lower to the ground. But Payne does a good job of getting low. And look at that right arm. See that right arm? If you can kind of swipe with that arm, if you know what I'm saying. Swipe with that arm just to get that, get the edge and get just around your man. You can get a front. He keeps the ball in front so he can't get blocked. See that? If you go straight up above his head, if he were just to release it straight up, then that's most likely getting blocked. Maybe not by Xavier, but by a bigger defender. He keeps it in the front. Lay up, crunch time, and one. Bucket. This one's earlier in the shot clock, but Payne's just going. So he gets the ball. He's getting low. He reads his defender. He takes him to the outside. Look, it's that same, uh, that same hand, same foot stop. The thing about that stop, why it's more effective to me than a lot of other stops, is because it's like in normal stride. So if it's in a normal stride, the defender's not going to be able to realize it as quickly as he were. If you were just setting up to change direction or you know stop on a dime so it's a normal stride that same foot same hand gets it to the other side because his defender is all the way on his left hand all the way back there and he just raises up look at that slight little fade 
um, it's a good shot to have just to square up because you're not always going to be able to just face the basket. You got to be able to square up in midair. Good finish, good release, bucket. The next play from Peyton versus Houston. He gets it. He got a bigger guy on him. So if, if you have a bigger guy and that guy is, I mean, he's guarding relatively high up. I mean, his heels are on the three point line, but I mean, you're, the guards are gonna, most likely going to be faster than him. So see how Peyton gets his feet going. Look at that. He gets his feet going. I call that a little shuffle. Um, Kyrie does it a lot. Um, it's a little shuffle he does. It just kind of gets your feet going. And, you know, you could do so many moves. You could cross it out there. I mean, when you shuffle and you speed your feet up and you look like you're going one way, the defender's going to think you're going that way too. And, you know, you can cross it. You can even just pull up into it off the shuffle. But that little action with his feet, I don't know if you guys can see it. Like right, right here. See that? His feet are shuffling. You know, he uses that off arm to kind of get by, try to get the edge, swipe, swipe the hand check away, and he gets into his body. As a guard, as a smaller guy finishing inside, you've got to be able to get into defender's body because if you don't, your shot's going to be blocked. I mean, unless you can just raise up over them, your shot's going to get blocked. The paint gets into him, and this is just, that's just great touch. I mean, he works on his finishing, so. I mean, shoot, <laughs> to get that, oh, there I am. Uh, to get that, I mean, just work on your finishing. Here's another one uh, where you guys can kind of see the shuffle that I'm talking about. I talked about in the last clip. So Peyton goes. He tries to attack right off the rip. That's good defense. See that? Oop, shuffle right there. I don't know if you can kind of see it. You get your feet going. You get your feet sped up. The defender's automatically going to think you're about to go. So right here, boom, boom, shuffle. Uh-huh, in and out. Change of speed. Gets into his body. Like I've said so many times with, with Peyton's isolation plays, he does a great job of changing speed and reading the defense. Like right here, he's reading your defense. In and out, boom. Right there, he's reading the defense again. So he does a great job at that. And he gets into your body. Remember what I said about getting into people? He uses his little elbows. Kind of hard to see, but if you use your elbows to kind of create space, you know, and Peyton's also strong, he works on it. But use your elbows to kind of create space, kind of like James Harden is. Um, Lou Will, uh, Kyrie, Jeff T, you know, guys like that. So just work on it. So right here, this is Peyton's move. Uh, you know, I think he learned this from Chris Paul. I don't know. He, I mean, I, I know he loves Chris Paul. That's his guy. And uh, I don't know. I see Chris Paul kind of do in the corner where he'll just, he'll just step back. But let me play a clip so you guys can see it. So he's got a big man switch on him. Chandler number 13 just got to get out the way. There's nine seconds left on the shot clock. You might as well just go. He's uh, a little quick in and out pullback. See, so defender, if you keep backing up, you keep giving him space. Look, he just keeps backing up, hand down for a second, gives enough space to get it off. And that's the Chris Paul move I'm talking about. Right about here. See, he just pulls it back. Chris Paul does it differently. He does it literally, I mean, usually off a crossover um, where he sidesteps kind of in the corner. But it's a similar move. Let's it go. You just gotta, you gotta play up. You gotta get a hand in there. Bucket. Which is it. So first, so when the defender's pressed up against you, you might as well just outside pivot. So keep your back to him, but pivot around so you can face him up. If you just rip in front of him, there's more likely, there's more of a chance where the defender's gonna get a hand on the ball and it's gonna be going the other way. So Peyton hits him with a little outside pivot just to read. He's kind of reading him this whole time. Fakes out, you know, to sell that move a little bit more. Maybe he, he could look that way too and kind of get his shoulders more into it. But he, he hits him with a little jab. He rips by, and I call that little Luca, Luca change of direction. So earlier I talked about the same foot, same hand uh, change of direction, but this one's a cross step. And off the cross step, usually, most of the times I find it, you can get it uh, off easier if you're going off the rip. But you also got to be able to cover a lot of space with it too. So Payne covers a lot of space. And something he does really good right here, really well right here, is the fact that he stays low. So look, he changes direction, but he's staying low to the ground the whole time. Look at that. He doesn't see the beat. And as, as a guard, you got to be able to manipulate the ball. He brings it high to keep it away from the defender, keep it away from the reach. You know, he has the ability. He's in the middle of the floor. So if you can get to the middle of the floor, I mean, you're gold. Uh, but... Uh, Addy right here should should be sliding just a little bit more because his defender completely turned his head. I mean, it's late shot clock and who knows. But 
his defender completely reached at the ball. So you just got to slide with him just to create that much more space if Payton were to kick it out. But Payton brings it high. And look at, uh, look at his feet. The feet is what separates him in this situation. What gets his defender going by him. So one, he takes that big step. See that left foot? He took that big step. It's that change of speed that he does off the one, two inside. But look, to set it up, look at his foot. You see how his foot kind of dragged? That's how he's able to get it off. He drags his foot to kind of slow himself down, floats it, like it. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, in the future, if there's more more players you want me to do in-depth breakdowns on or kind of like what I see when I watch film and, you know, just drop their names down or hit me up, whatever it is, follow my Instagram at Next Level Player, um, Twitter, same thing. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back.